So what we want to do today is start our program with an invocation from one of our Luther Village residents here, uh, and a Lutheran minister, Pastor Fred Jacoby. Pastor Jacoby, please. begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you thankful that we live in a free society. We can elect those who serve us in government. We can worship as we choose. We have the right to speak out without reprisal. We have opportunities to make a living and thrive in our economy. So many blessings that don't even exist in many countries of our world. But Father, we also know that this freedom has come with a price. We have had to strive and fight for all of these God-given rights. And so we thank you for citizens in the history of our country who have held up the banner of freedom throughout the years. We especially thank you uh, for those who have served in our military, those who were uh, risked their lives, those who were wounded both physically and emotionally, and those who made the supreme sacrifice. We value the sacrifices that they have made and continue to make that keep us free. We ask that you uplift the veterans we honor here today and bless our speaker who will share with us an important message about life in the military. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jacoby. Um, next, we've got a real treat that we have it every time we have one of these wonderful breakfasts. We have the Arlington's Barbershop Chorus with us today. They're going to first sing the national anthem, followed by the military service song. So if you can stand during the national anthem, please do, um, and remove your hats. Um, and please feel free to stand when you hear your military service song. Arling Tones? Right. 
gentlemen that is the Arlingtones barbershop chorus they're famous for those songs and we have them here every year and we hope to have them always in the future now um, we want to thank you guys thank you. Hi, now we're just so very very fortunate to have all of you here I looked at the list today and we have veterans from World War II Korea Vietnam Desert Storm, Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, and all the veterans from the Cold War. So we've got the entire spectrum here of veterans that we really, really want to honor and remember for what your service is. But you'll also notice in the hallway here, all those portraits on the wall there, on those panels, that's the Portrait of a Soldier exhibit. Um, those 330 portraits are the visions or the images of the young men and women from Illinois who died in the service of our nation from 9-11 through 19, or 2020. And they start out with two young Navy officers who were killed at the Pentagon on 9-11. So, We'll have someone, we'll have some very dignified speakers here will tell you about that, but we want you to take some time, if you would, even after this breakfast, and take a look at those faces, because those are the ones who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and we all appreciate that. Now, 
Um, what I'd like to do is begin here by having um, the mayor of our town, the mayor of Village of Arlington Heights, Tom Hayes, come up and welcome you. By the way, Tom is an Army veteran and a West Point graduate. Mayor Hayes? <laughs> Well, thanks, Ray, and thank you all for joining us on this very bright and beautiful day in the village of Arlington Heights. Again, on behalf of the entire Arlington Heights Village Board, including Trustee Mary Beth Canty, who was here with her daughter a little bit earlier, and all the residents that we represent, again, it's my honor to officially welcome you to this very special event here in the village of Arlington Heights. Uh, I'm so uh, thankful for all the sponsors of this event, especially the Lutheran uh, Lutheran Village and Lutheran Home and uh, all the great work that they've done for our community for many, many years now. And so thank uh, them for this very beautiful venue that we have uh, this morning for the first time. And so we really thank them. It's always great to have the Arlingtones with us. Uh, it really marks a very special event when the Arlingtones are here singing for us. And so uh, they've asked me to sing with them in the past and I've told them that I don't even sing in the shower. And so uh, I, I really rely on them and all their beautiful voices, and so thank them as well. Uh, thanks to Greg, as always, for his leadership in putting on this very special event. It's been a very challenging uh, almost two years now here in the village of Arlington Heights. Um, we, as military veterans, know how to follow orders. We don't necessarily uh, expect our residents to follow orders uh, as much as they have done over the past two years. And so we really thank them for their compliance with all of the orders that have been given and the, their compliance with all the uh, requirements for getting us through this pandemic. And we've really done a great job as a community in getting through the pandemic, and we can't thank everybody enough for that. As Greg said, it's been a couple of years since we've gotten together. It's very uh, great that things are starting to open up again. I had the opportunity to go to the Arlington Heights Reserve Center over on Central Road a couple weeks ago for a Casing the Colors ceremony. Uh, first time I've been there in a couple of years and uh, they asked me to be part of the official March On party. And fortunately I remembered how to march. I, I first learned how to march in the summer of 1974. I know a lot of you, uh, you learned how to march many, many years before that, but we know that as military veterans we don't forget what we learned and all the great things that we uh, received as a result of our military service. Uh, learning how to march was just one of the very many, many things that we learned. And so it's great that we can gather again today uh, to tell our stories and to visit with each other and to remember all the great things that we <coughs> received from our military service and the opportunities to serve this great country that we live in. So thank you all for your service. Thanks for helping to provide the service that we enjoy here in the United States of America. Have a great morning, everybody. Thank you, Mayor Hayes. And uh, now I just want to say a special thanks to the Luther Village folks who are hosting us today, um, not only in this beautiful location here, but you're going to be really um, have a treat here for breakfast. Um, I hear it's uh, one of the best in town. And um, we just like um, the director or the VP of operations here and our biggest sponsor, Rick Remington, to come up and say a few words. Rick? Thank you, Greg. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Absolutely beautiful day today. Uh, I'd like to thank our partners for this event, and uh, I'd also like to tell you that when uh, Greg and Linda, Greg Padovani and Linda Smith first approached us, our response was immediate. Of course we're going to do this, and that's because we have a very strong group of veterans here at uh, Luther Village. In fact, one-third of the attendance today is Luther Village veterans. Uh, they're the heart and soul of our community. We appreciate them. We appreciate all veterans. And this is our chance to say thank you and uh, be supportive, and we hope to make this an annual event and do it every year. Uh, so for breakfast today, uh, we've got a great treat planned for you. We've got uh, Eggs Benedict uh, served with sliced beef tenderloin underneath, and uh, we've got some real nice rustic hash browns. It's a big plate. There's a lot of food, so uh, enjoy your breakfast, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you.
That's a far cry from sea rations, isn't it? <laughs> Enjoy the breakfast. What he did is he simply put out a bunch of blank cards like this, and he told the high school kids, hey, if you want to say something to the veterans, write whatever you want on these cards, and uh, we'll deliver them up. So they should be at your tables, but I've got a couple of special ones here that kind of distill what I'm hearing from these high school students, not only these high school students at Hersey, but all the high schools I go to and a lot of the grade schools that I'm able to get to, it's all the same thing coming from the youth of our nation. And that's probably the most important thing that you should hear when this is um, a young student, her name is Ava, and she says, thank you so much for everything you do. And this is Dear Veteran, thank you for so much for everything you do. You really have no idea what kind of impact you have on the community. I'm so proud of you and how hard you all have worked to make the world a better place. This is Ava, one of the high school students here. Then, Julius follows on to say, Thankful, thank you for all the hard work you've done. The whole, she underlines the word whole in community. The whole community appreciates you so much. Your bravery and actions have inspired so many. These are high school kids saying this right from directly from their heart. There's no, nobody's prompting them. Nobody's telling them what to write. This is coming from the hearts of our young people. Um, here's um, Annie, who says, thank you so much for your service. Because of you, we have our freedom. Thank you for fighting and protecting our country. You are so brave. You are a hero to so many people, and we are grateful for all the things you have done. And Danny, oh, here's a good one. Thank you for everything you've done for our country. Thank you for dedicating your lives so I can live my life today as I do. Your bravery certainly does not go unnoticed. You have my utmost respect. Your community, our community, and the country thanks you for all you have done. I hope myself to serve one day. So they're following up. They're talking about following in our footsteps. And these are young people. There's no draft now, as you know. These are young people who are serving out of the goodness of their heart. Perry says, thank you for all you have done to work and protect us. Know that we appreciate you and we respect you always. We always have you in our thoughts and prayers. Okay, this is just a sampling. I received almost 200 of these yesterday, and it was hard for me to read them all uh, because they're all like this. They're on your tables. They're there, and enjoy them because those are coming. Those thoughts are coming from the hearts of our young people here in Arlington Heights, and I hope all over the nation. I hope this is happening everywhere. So just know that there's young people who have you and us, all of us, in your heart, in their hearts, and in their prayers. Now, and by the way, I'm going to email back the teacher, Jim Mix, at Percy High School. Um, I'm going to email him and tell him how much we appreciated these thoughts, and how much they meant to us. I, I'm going to give him, and I'm going to ask him to tell the students how much we appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, we also have um, some wonderful people from Humana to thank because they have been sponsoring our, they sponsored our program today. And they are, um, how would I say it, big supporters of veterans. In fact, I, they have a whole veteran liaison department that is very much involved in supporting veterans and veterans events all over the three state area that they represent. Um, and we're going to hear from Jory, from Jory, sorry, from Jory, um, a few words about what it means for Humana. Jory? Thanks, 
right? <laughs> well, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous morning, isn't it? Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay, now it's better. It's a gorgeous morning. Uh, couldn't be better. This is a great event. I want to thank uh, Luther Village. I want to thank Veterans Memorial Committee. I want to thank Greg, um, General Major Mukiyama, uh, Rick, everybody. This is just fantastic. I couldn't be happier to do do something like this. Uh, again, my name is Jory Klebanoff. I'm the uh, market manager for the northern counties of Illinois for Humana. And with me today is my lovely wife, Diana, uh, your local rock star agent, Adriana Soto, here with her husband, David. And uh, we're more than honored to do this. We do things for the veterans all the time, uh, whether it be food drives, uh, things about mental health and PTSD, things like that. Um, I just had my 18th year Humana anniversary, actually, working there. And I can tell you from the very beginning, Humana has always been a huge supporter of uh, the military, uh, the veteran community in general. And uh, I don't know if a lot of you know, but we are the national exclusive partner of VFW, AMVETS, DAV, Rolling Thunder, uh, Vietnam Veterans Commemoration, uh, what am I forgetting here? American, well, American Legion, we're not an exclusive partner, but we do work with a lot of American Legions. Uh, this, this is the exclusive partnership nationally. We do handle, uh, as many of you know, the uh, TRICARE for Life uh, as a carrier, and uh, I'm forgetting the USAA. So we're a partner with them as well. So we're very proud of that, but what we're more proud of is handling social determinants of health. That's a, a buzz phrase from COVID that you probably hear a lot of, but in the veteran community, it's extremely important. Things uh, to combat loneliness, hunger, uh, mental health, all of these things we take great pride in, but we're probably most proud of our veterans uh, hiring initiative. In 2021, we've already, we've already surpassed our record, that uh, we're, our goal that we were really shooting for. But uh, 6,000 veterans will be hired by the end of 2021 if uh, we stay the course, which we're really, really proud of. So you know, thank you for that as well. But this isn't really about Humana in any way, shape, or form. This is all about you and your service, servicemen and women, the fallen from 9-11, uh, just the military community in general. Uh, heartwarming thank you. Uh, we're honored to do this. We're honored to help from the bottom of our hearts. Thanks. That's about all I have. Thank you, Joy. Thank you again to Humana for supporting this event. Much appreciated. Uh, moving on, um, we wanted to have something very special for you here at Luther Vera Village, and you probably noticed it when you walked into this room. All the portraits along those windows there are part of an exhibit that's called Portrait of a Soldier. Some of you might have already seen it. These are the hand-drawn portraits of the 330 young men and women, all Illinois sons and daughters, who died in the service of their nation from September 11, 2001, 9-11, all the way through the end, um, and actually the last were in 2020, thank God. Um, the two naval officers in the first panel up in the very top, um, two naval officers uh, from Illinois were killed at the Pentagon on 9-11. So you can see where Illinois started feeling the pain of this war, these wars, um, right away. And we were so very honored to have this exhibit. It was um, something that uh, Linda Kozma, this young lady here, um, arranged for us to have here on display. And this is actually going around uh, the area. It'll be at um, Elk Grove High School um, next week and all the way through uh, Veterans Day. And uh, we're so very honored to have two of the artists who were responsible for drawing those portraits. Um, and this, by the way, this whole exhibit kind of grew from 9-11 on forward. So there's portraits and portraits and portraits, sadly, of these young men and women who gave their ultimate sacrifice but the people who are drawing them are here with us today, 
Um, the first is Donald Jeremiah. Donald? And the second is his daughter, Kiana Jeremiah. And on top of that, Kiana is a spokesperson for this exhibit, so she is going to come up and tell us a little bit of background about where did this come from and what does it mean to all the people when it goes around the state and is on exhibit. Kiana? Thank you, Greg. Um, thank you to everybody that made this event possible. Um, also, special thanks to General Ukuyama for your continued dedicated service to our country. Thank you, Mayor Hayes, for your continued support um, for the military and veteran community um, throughout this community. Um, and most importantly, thank you all veterans for your service. I am overwhelmed with, with just emotions of being in the presence of true heroes and such bravery. Um, so I'm Kiana Jeremiah. I'm here with my dad. Um, we are part of the Portrait of the Soldier exhibit that was started by a young man named Cameron Schilling. He started this by drawing someone from his community that had that was a fallen soldier and ever since then he kind of started doing these portraits he was hand delivering them um, from all soldier, soldiers of Illinois and then once his career took him to DC me and my dad we decided to continue this project uh, starting in 2018 so all the the images that you see um, illustrations pending those were the portraits that we continued to draw and get those completed for the families um, I'm actually a Gold Star granddaughter. My grandfather was Staff Sergeant Aleki Jeremiah, and he passed away in, he was in Vietnam. And so just having this connection, um, full circle, family related, it's just such an honor to be a part of this project. And um, me and my dad, we, we collaborate. He'll do a portrait, I'll do a portrait, and we just kind of come together and make sure that we're truly capturing um, the lives of these young men and women and what they served for our country and it's just it's the true um, honor to be a part of. I want to thank Linda Cosma for making this possible and guiding us and making sure that these legacies are never forgotten. They're remembered always and it's just truly important for all the different generations to continue to remember them as well. So um, in closing I just want to Thank everybody, um, all the veterans, your bravery, they'll never, and it'll never go unforgotten, and it's truly special to be a part of this. And I also want to wish an early happy birthday to all Marines next week. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kiana. Um, and a special thanks uh, to let you know, it was Illinois Governor Pat Quinn who saw the potential here and really supported that project and has been speaking on this exhibit all over the nation, all over the state. Um, he's actually going to be a keynote speaker at Elk Grove High School at their uh, November 11th Veterans Day event where these same panels are going to be up on display for all the kids that, all the students, at Elk Grove High School. And that happened, those same panels were over at um, Hersey High School. Um, and what's neat about this is more high schools are asking for it, and they're not just putting them up. The um, social studies teachers, the history teachers, the English teachers are asking the kids to go through and look at these and then write what they think about it. And some of that is really profound. I, I hear from the teachers that it's something that really changes these students as they look into the faces of all these kids, some of them kids, just about their age. You know, um, seniors in high school or who have signed up for the Army and going into the service right after graduation. Those people are about their age. And those portraits make a big difference for those young men and women. It means a lot. So um, these hopefully will be out and about um, through our state and they'll continue. Um, but it's so heartwarming to hear that so many institutions like our schools want these 
and want their kids, their students, to be um, exposed to that and to have these stories told to them. So thank you again, uh, Donald and uh, uh, Kiana and um, Linda, for bringing this wonderful exhibit here. All right, now, it is my honor to introduce our keynote speaker today. Um, he's a gentleman that you all probably know, but um, I have to read, I have an order, no. Uh, I've been in, um, I just feel compelled to read um, some background on uh, General, Major General James Mukuyama. And it starts out that, uh, he always starts out, he's a Chicago boy. He was uh, born and raised on the northwest side of Chicago, had a humble existence in the beginning, but then after the University of Illinois graduating from the ROTC program there, he served 30 years in the Army. And um, during um, five years that he was on active duty, he was a platoon leader in Korea on the DMZ. Following that, he was a company commander in the 9th Infantry Division in Vietnam two tours there. And he became the youngest general officer in the Army in 1987 when he was promoted to brigadier. And then he also became, um, three years later, he became the youngest major general in the Army uh, in 1987. There you go. I'm sorry. Um, he was the first Asian American to command a U.S. Army division. Another groundbreaking um, leader there. And um, among the decorations that he has, he has the Distinguished Service Medal, the Silver Star, the Legion of Merit, three bronze stars, Purple Heart Parachutist Badge, Expert Infantry, Infantryman's Badge, and the Combat Infantry Badge. But since he retired from active federal service in 1995, he has volunteered in all kinds of ways to support our community and especially veterans. Um, he answered the calling, as he would refer to it, uh, to devote his life to the Ministry of Military Outreach USA. That's an incredible organization that we're, we hear about a lot. It's a faith-based organization dedicated to helping veterans and their families. In fact, right now, there's a drive uh, to collect um, home items for uh, veterans exiting homelessness. And it's all over our area here, and you'll see it like at the American Legion in Arlington Heights, there's a big pod there that they're filling up with these household items that these veterans who are getting their first apartment after being homeless, they need everything, literally. They need everything, and this is where it's coming from. Major efforts like this. And um, he also speaks on the top of, uh, topic of moral injury, the hidden battlefield wounds. And many of us have had the wonderful opportunity to listen to that. And if you ever do get a chance, please make, uh, take that opportunity because it really, it does explain what so many of us have been struggling with for so many years. Um, in addition, now this is just Military Outreach USA. General Mukuyama does so much else. Um, he is the chairman of the advisory council for the James A. Lovell Federal Health Care Center. That's the North Chicago VA that we know and love. He's the chairman of the patient advisory council there. He's also a director at the Pritzker Military Museum and Library. And he's on um, an executive, he's on the, he joined the executive board of the Friends of the Fisher House. And they're working to build a Fisher House, or the equivalent of a Fisher House, up at Chicago, North Chicago VA. Um, he's also a life member of, um, it says here, he's a life member of, of the Vietnam Veterans of America, um, the American Legion, the VFW. He's with all of us. He's a veteran with all of us. Um, he lives in Glenview, so he's a local boy still, um, with his wife of 50 years, KJ, and he also attends, uh, he held, uh, he uh, organized the um, men's group at uh, Will Creek Church for two decades. And now he attends the Hope Community Church in Glenview, Illinois. 
General Mukuyama. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, please take your seat. Thanks so much. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm just, uh, to hear those type of introductions, uh, I can hardly wait to hear myself speak. Uh, but I really, really appreciate those words. Uh, but as anyone knows who served in the military, uh, I had the greatest NCOs who made me look good. And I had commanders who mentored me. So, Mayor Hayes, my fellow veterans, Four and a half years ago, I participated in Mayor Hayes' Veterans Prayer Breakfast here in Arlington Heights, and it is always an honor to return to one of the most patriotic communities in our entire nation. A special thanks to Greg Padovani, the chair of the Arlington Heights Veterans Memorial Committee, and a fellow member of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 311. For those of you who know me and have heard me speak before, here it comes. <laughs> Every day is a great day. I have my faith, my family, and live in the finest country in the world. Now, this, this, this is my standard daily mantra, so everybody who knows me knows I'm going to say it. When I go to the Jewel and, and shop for groceries, uh, all the service uh, cashiers want me to come to their station because they, they know what I'm going to say. Uh, but, you know, that comes from my experience as an infantry soldier in combat. Uh, there were times that I didn't know if I was going to be alive the next moment, much less see the next sunrise. When you're in those circumstances, what is important in life becomes clearly focused, and that is faith, family, and living in this great nation. Now sometimes I get an objection about that final part of my mantra, and when I say it's the finest country in the world because of all the stuff that we have going on. And my response is, time out. I've been around the block a few times. When I was a kid, the odds of me becoming a two-star general in the United States Army were slim and next to none. I have seen an African-American elected president of our nation and re-elected. When President Kennedy was elected, that was a big deal in this country. And, but most of the young people today don't have a clue. So they say, why? And I said, because he was an Irish woman Catholic. Today, that doesn't make, there's no concern about that. So what does that tell you? That tells you, in my lifetime alone, there have been tremendous improvements in equal rights and race relations in our country. In fact, in terms of equal opportunity and freedom, we are actually the most multi-ethnic nation and least racist nation in the world. Do we still have problems? Of course we do. But the proof is in the pudding. We have millions more people wanting to come to this country than the minuscule few who say they want to leave. And even those who have said they want to leave, I don't remember seeing them buying their tickets. Uh, we have every reason to be proud to be Americans. Now this coming month, we are observing Veterans Day to recognize and be thankful that so many have given so much to keep alive our heritage of democracy and freedom. What is this heritage that drives our citizens to take up arms, risking their lives? The United States of America is the most successful society in the history of the world by the creation of a nation not based on individual ethnic or racial identities, but on the new concept of a nation of free individuals that is a republic based on the three key principles embodied in our nation's founding documents. First is a belief in a creator 
who bestowed inalienable rights to all humanity. Second is liberty, the freedom of individuals to determine their own destiny with limited government safety and security functions, but with guaranteed individual rights. The third is a republic, representing the interest of all individuals and states. These principles are printed on every coin in our country, represented by the mottos, number one, in God we trust, number two, liberty, and number three, e pluribus unum, out of many, one. These are the foundations upon which our nation has thrived and prospered through the blessings of our Creator. These are the principles that have and still today attract millions of immigrants to our shores as the beacon of freedom and opportunity. This is what has motivated our generations of service members to voluntarily answer the call to the colors. And one of the most important freedoms is the freedom of religion. I would take strong issue with those who insist that the Constitution in some way discourages religious observances. The Constitution, in fact, encourages the practice of religious faith by guaranteeing us the freedom to follow whatever our spiritual beliefs are without government interference. As a combat veteran, I can witness to the importance of faith in my personal experiences in peace and especially in war. As a commander, I emphasize to my soldiers that whatever their religious beliefs, they should cling to them fiercely. If you read books about the experiences of prisoners of war, survivors of the Holocaust, or those who have been in combat, it is clear that those who endured those experiences better had strong spiritual foundations. I have found this to be true in life, especially regarding death. My wife, KJ, and I were hospice patient volunteers for over six years dealing with individuals who had been diagnosed with terminal illnesses. Without exception, those with strong faith traditions were better, to able, better able to handle their situations. With a special aura of contentment and able to overcome their most basic fears. Military service has a way of stripping away our differences and forming a strong community that lasts a lifetime, extending far beyond the actual active duty years. That is why veterans gravitate to other veterans and are willing to share their stories regardless of service or when they have served. All of the military services have universal values of integrity, duty, and dedication that establish a sense of trust and respect. I have been retired from the Army for many years, and people often ask me what I miss most about the military. And I always answer, it is the people, the honor of being with Americans who share the values of selfless service, honor, and dedication to defending our great nation. It is they who I miss the most. And this holiday, unlike Memorial Day, which honors those service members who made the supreme sacrifices of their lives, Veterans Day is devoted to honoring the living veterans of all wars. Part of the tradition of gathering on this national holiday is to honor the noble concept of patriotism that emphasizes selfless service to our nation. On such occasions, we proudly display the stars and stripes and pause to honor all those who have served in defense of our country. We do these things to remind ourselves that freedom we enjoy was secured at great cost. The payment was from the minute from made by the sacrifice of the men and women of our armed forces from the Minutemen of the Revolutionary War to the mountains of Afghanistan. 
There are three main reasons for events such as this one being conducted throughout our country. First, to remember the sacrifices of our service members and their families. Second, to honor them. And third, to inform future generations so that they will fully understand that freedom is indeed not free, but paid for by the sacrifice and service of our military and their families. The great Roman orator Cicero once said, poor is the nation that has no heroes, but poorer still is the nation that having heroes fails to remember and honor them. Today, we indeed honor those who fought for us. Now, who are these citizen patriots? Our veterans have come from every part of our country and from all territories and races. Men and women from every state and territory of our great nation, some were called by our country to serve, and some volunteered. Today, they are all volunteers. Now, every day of our lives, we walk unknowingly among these quiet heroes and heroines. A young police, police officer recently returned from his second tour of duty in the Middle East. A grandmother who at 22 years of age went to Vietnam as a young nurse. A former high school star quarterback who volunteered to fight in Korea and came back without an arm. A slow-moving senior citizen at the mall who once stormed the beach at Normandy in World War II. In our society, some are honored for their great wealth, political power, athletic ability, or entertainment status. But of all the titles in the world, I think the proudest is that of military veteran, because it refers to an individual who was willing to sacrifice everything for America. As we look back and feel pride in patriotism, we must also look to caring for those who have served. And for many, the war goes on. The suicide rate today among our military and veterans is epidemic, with over 22 per day dying by suicide, nearly one per hour. And the invisible wounds especially are complex, with numerous physical, psychological, social, and spiritual adverse effects that impact our military veterans and their families. Now, the most well-known of these wounds are post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and traumatic brain injury, TBI, and military sexual trauma, or MST. But one of the most serious yet little publicized of the invisible wounds is a condition called moral injury. Most of the public, and frankly some healthcare professionals, are not familiar with the term and its implications. Moral injury is a major factor in the alarm alarmingly high rate of suicide among our military and veterans. However, I need to emphasize that the vast majority of veterans returning to our communities are normal, well-adjusted individuals. Unfortunately, the media often shows veterans in an unfavorable light, similar to what was done to my generation, the Vietnam veterans. The veterans integrating back into civilian society today are exactly what any organization wants, an individual who is hardworking, disciplined, loyal, a team member, and de dedicated with experience and responsibilities far beyond that of their peers. The concept of moral injury is so intuitive that you will understand within 30 seconds. From the time you're born until you're 18 years old, you develop a personal moral code, a sense of right or wrong that could come from your family, your religion, your community, whatever, you develop a personal moral code. Then you join the military and you learn a warrior code. That code is superimposed on your personal moral code and in fact transforms it somewhat. You then may have to participate in activities that violate your personal moral code, such as killing, 
You don't have to be the person that pulls the trigger. You could be a witness, or you could feel you should have prevented it. Or you follow another unit, and you see that innocent civilians have been killed. Or you handle body parts. At that time, you sustain a so-called invisible wound of war called moral injury. It's not a physical wound. You can't see it. But military operations are constantly moving. You're going from point A to point B to point C. You don't have time to stop and reflect on this stuff. So what do you do? You bury it. You suppress it. And it becomes unresolved grief and shame. Then you return to the States, often to a civilian community, such as Chicago or Seattle, that does not understand the military culture and the issues that you are facing, and the moral injury bubbles up to the surface. Unless you have a strong coping mechanism for that, or a solid support system, bad stuff happens. Anger, despair, depression, and suicide. And the insidious effects of the COVID virus has dramatically increased isolation within our society by preventing social interaction. You see, those with moral injury often feel that they have participated in such bad things that they have no personal worth. They're not worthy of love, that no one can love them, that God doesn't love them. That is why many veterans do not talk about their war experiences. They are fearful that they will lose the respect of their loved ones. And at the same time, they desire to shield them from having to share the moral injury themselves. Many veterans also feel that civilians can never understand because they did not experience it. In the position of Military Outreach USA, a faith-based nonprofit that I founded a decade ago, is that the main approach to dealing with moral injury is not prescription drugs but rather the forgiveness of a moral authority, a loving God, the counseling of clergy and sensitive therapists, and the support of family, fellow veterans, and a spiritual community offering hope and help. And moral injury is nothing new. In the Bible, the book of Numbers, chapter 31, when the Israeli warriors return from defeating the Midianites, Moses greets them outside of the camp, but he will not let them re-enter the camp until they went through a purification process. The knights, upon return from the Crusades, were not permitted to participate in the Holy Sacraments until they went through a process of penance and reconciliation. And our Native American culture has had community sweat lodges and ceremonies for returning warriors so society has known for millennia that if you send warriors out to war, when they come back, you have to help them reintegrate into the community. Our so-called modern society has forgotten all of that. The healing process for moral injury basically involves three stages. First, as with any complex invisible wound, the individual has to understand the condition he or she has. I can't tell you how many times veterans have come up to me after a presentation and thanked me because they had been told they had PTSD and knew that was not their main problem. It's like a light bulb went off. So now they can move to the second healing stage, which is to seek and receive forgiveness. This can come from clergy or working with sensitive therapists. This stage is complicated and can be resolved in a short time or require extensive effort and time to resolve. And the final stage is to rebuild that lost sense of self-worth I mentioned earlier. And one of the best ways to rebuild that lost sense of self-worth is by serving others. And Military Outreach USA is also providing specific serving opportunities to serve our veterans and their families 
in two areas. First, regarding homeless veterans, in 2016, we had a memorandum of agreement signed by the Secretary of Veterans Affairs that recognized Military Outreach USA as a national partner in a program assisting veterans coming out of homelessness, which we call Veterans Exiting Homelessness. Through our network, we collect items that we refer to as move-in essential items to help veterans moving off the streets into apartments. Part of that effort includes our Beds for Bets program. Uh, you know, when these homeless veterans come off the street and they're put in a one-bedroom apartment, they don't have a bed. They might have a sleeping bag or a cardboard box or a blanket, uh, but they don't have beds. So since 2016, uh, we have provided uh, move-in essential items to over 45,000 veterans, collected over 1.2 million items, and we have we just delivered our 2,000th bed. That means 2,000 veterans or family members who are now sleeping in a bed instead of on the floor. Second, we are educating the public about moral injury. We published a book in 2015 that is one of the most comprehensive publications on moral injury. It is called, and those who have served will get this right away, the title of the book is They Don't Receive Purple Hearts. It's on our website at www.militaryoutreachusa.org. That's www.militaryoutreachusa.org. And you can download the entire book. Uh, we don't charge for our services. Everything we provide to the veterans is free of charge. We just want the word to get out and we want to help. And we have combined with another veterans faith-based nonprofit called Stand By Me Heroes with the motto, when you can't run, you walk. When you can't walk, you crawl. And when you can't crawl, we will carry you. We have veterans who walk alongside those dealing with these invisible wounds of war. We call them foxhole soul counselors. They are not licensed social workers or psychologists or ministers, just veterans who are there to listen and offer hope, comfort, and help if requested. Uh, we call our offices Dunkin' Donuts. And the recent news stories depicting the scenes of the Afghanistan withdrawal, the loss of our 13 brave service members, juxtaposition with scenes from the Vietnam War, Saigon withdrawal, and Vietnam, and have caused tremendous stress and strain on our Afghanistan and Vietnam veterans alike. If you know of anyone having difficulty at this time, please reach out to them. Let them know your appreciation for their honorable service. Encourage them to reach out to the Veterans Crisis Line at 1-800-273-8255. That's 1-800-273-8255 and press the number one. As we gather here today, I would ask for your continued prayers for our service members still missing in action from previous wars and for their families. And for our brave men and women serving in uniform today, standing on guard throughout the world. God has enabled me at this time in history to answer his calling to serve our military through Military Outreach USA. The good Lord encourages me every day of my life. And my time with you here today is just such an encouragement. Truly, every day is a great day. I have my faith, my family, and live in the finest country in the world. In conclusion, we can be thankful today that so many brave Americans and their families are serving our country, wearing our nation's uniform, to keep alive our heritage of democracy and freedom. 
And we can be equally thankful to all those veterans who set the example and paved the way through their dedication, sacrifice, and service. And especially to my fellow Vietnam veterans, let me say, welcome home. Thank you very much. Thank you, General, for those wonderful words. And just as an FYI to you all, um, two things. Number one, um, General Mokuyama has uh, agreed to send me a copy of that speech for anybody who would like to receive it, and I will send it out to our veteran organization leaders. Um, wonderful words to live by. Second, in your program on page two, that is, if you open up your program to page two, it says resources for veterans. And um, in echoing what uh, the general has said to us here, um, those are the important resources for veterans who are in crisis. And um, you see there at the very top is that veterans, VA Veterans Crisis phone number, and make sure you know that and people use it. Second is, um, and another wonderful, wonderful program here in the Chicago area is uh, the Road Home Program at Rush Medical Center. In fact, we actually are honored today to have the founding executive director of the Road Home Program, Will Beiersdorf, uh, here. Stand up, Will. They help veterans from all over the nation. They fly them in, put them up in a Fisher House environment, and they treat not only the veteran, for those PTSD type conditions. They also treat the family of that veteran. So it's a, it's a really comprehensive approach to treating the situation. And then finally, Military Outreach USA, there you have what um, the general is talking to us about. There you have his phone number, you have the Military Outreach website. And one last thing, and it's something I just like you guys to know about, and that is Operation Wild Horse or Veterans R&R &R, out in just northwest of here, um, near um, uh, McHenry. They have a equine um, therapy program, they'll call it, where they rescue uh, wild mustangs from the kill pens of um, Nevada, and they bring them here, they train up the horses, and then they assign a horse to a veteran with PTSD and the two bond together. And, and it turns out that the Mustang horses are really, really intuitive, emotionally intuitive animals. They read the faces of human beings and they react. And it's a way of veterans to really bond with somebody or something else and learn to re-enter the world of relationships. Uh, they're cert currently, I think they have 40 over 40 veterans in the program. And over here, uh, standing up in the back of the room here is uh, Command Sergeant Re Major Retired, uh, John Gledhill, who is a big supporter and active uh, uh, person in vet, um, Operation Wild Horse. If you'd like to learn more from it, go over and talk to John Gledhill here. He'll tell you all about it. Finally, um, those are resources. We want you to keep in mind, remember, keep this program if it helps. Keep these numbers, keep these institutions available because they do come in handy and we have used them several times helping veterans. Finally, today, or not today, um, November 10th of 2021 is the 246th birthday of the United States Marine Corps. And we have quite a number of Marines present here today. And wouldn't you know it, they brought a birthday cake. <laughs> and uh, Phil Wickline here from the um, Northwest Suburban Marine Corps League brought his pig sticker, his saber, that he's going to cut the, um, or actually he's going to ask a guest of honor to cut the cake. And then the wonderful people here at Luther Village will cut up 
the cake into many pieces, and anybody who would want to have a piece of cake, birthday cake, raise your hand, and they'll bring it out to you. But Phil, if you'd like to go back to the um, uh, the cutting table back there, and I'm going to give you um, a general Mukiyama. If you would um, take the take that, yeah, um, General Mukiyama is their um, guest of honor this year, and there goes the pig sticker. Um, they're going to do a quick talk or a quick statement of how they're honored to be here. There they go. And General Mukiyama will take the saber and make the first cut. And then anybody who wants um, birthday cake, just raise your hand. Okay? Got it? All right. So while they're getting back there, and they're getting back there soon, I just want to make one last invitation that you go and take a look at those portraits on those panels there. Um, after we take our photo, which is, we all know that we take a photo of everybody present here as a Remembering Our Veterans um, series. We have this going back to the year, oh, I think it's 2010 or maybe nine. And we've got them every year where we have our esteemed veterans gather around and we'll do this in front of the bar there um, no drinking allowed. Um, and we're just going to ask everybody here after um, the, um, the final benediction by uh, Pastor Jacoby, we'll ask all of you to just gather around at that bar and our, where's our photographer? Um, Larry Martin is our fabulous photographer and he's going to snap a few pictures. Then I will put it on the Veterans Memorial website. Um, actually, all the pictures taken here today will be on our website. And if you look at my signature block, it's the website at the very bottom. Just go on there. You'll see pictures from all the way back in 2009 and 10 of not only the Veterans Breakfasts, but all the uh, Memorial Day events. And you'll see some wonderful people in there. So, um, Phil Wickline, are we ready for that ceremony? And I see them cutting the cake now. So anybody who would like to have a piece of that cake, please raise your hand. It's good stuff. It's very good stuff. Oh, oh my gosh, look at over here. Oh my gosh, all around the room, ladies and gentlemen. I see um, uh, anybody a dentist here? <laughs> There's some business. <laughs> Future business here for you. And they'll, it'll just take them a minute or so to uh, cut up the cake and then distribute it. All right, once again, thank you all, all of you veterans from all wars, from all times. Thank you for all you have done for our nation. I'd like um, at this time to ask um, Pastor Jacoby to come up and give us our benediction and then We'll wait a few minutes and then ask you to all gather around in front of the bar for that final Remembering Our Veterans picture. Pastor Jacoby? That's right. we got three generations of sailors here. I am, I am not, you can stand if you want to. I am not a veteran. Uh, when I was a, a student at the seminary, I was exempt uh, from service. But five years later, in my first parish, I got a note from the draft board that my status had changed, and I fully expected to be uh, drafted and maybe serve as a chaplain. And, and I called the draft board and I said, this is the new status that I have, what does that mean? And they told me, I'm too old to be drafted. <laughs> I could not serve, but I appreciate uh, all the sacrifices that you men have made, men and women have made. Let us pray. O oh Lord, what a great occasion this has been for veterans in our area to come together and to be recognized. Their stories of service inspire all of us to continue to value our great freedoms and all give us the power to keep our nation free. 
as you have been with them, we ask that you be with all the men and women who are presently in our armed forces. Keep them vigilant and dedicated, and above all, free from harm. Be with the families that stand behind them and the nation that is indebted to their work. In our prayers this Thanksgiving, we look for unity in our country. We need to listen to one another. We need to strengthen our concern for any who are suffering and in need. We need to enact legislation and laws for our common good. Help all of us here to do whatever we can to make these things possible. Bless us on our homeward way, thankful for your love and for your help. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Jacoby. And um, right now, you know what I think we should do? They're still cutting the cake. So all you veterans, you're still, you're up, you're standing up. Let's all gather around the bar um, for our remembering our veterans photo. Come on, let's do this quick, and then you can go back to your tables and, and chow down on that wonderful cake. 